Hi again everyone, um, I'm back. So as the last video, um, we did the unboxing, uh, I thought next, the obvious thing to do is to uh, get into a brew. So I thought I'd just show you my temporary uh, brewery area, I think uh, it's the best way to describe it. Downstairs utility room, I mean it's kitchen, utility, I've got kids running around. Uh, and I've always been a little bit wary of having a hot brow meister at kind of a, a lower level with um, with kids running around and stuff so I've kind of set it up temporarily uh, while I give it a bit of a clean in the downstairs utility room um, so let's just take you over and have a, have a quick look uh, let's just turn you around so it's got it set up on um, dining room chair I've had to um, I have to kind of wedge the back because the uh, dining room chairs are, aren't necessarily flat um, and I'm kind of on the lookout I think for like a like a nice kind of stooly table thing uh, for this to go on because of course you need that height um, in between the the tap on the on the bottom and where your fermentation chamber is going to go when you empty it out so I need to have a bit of a look at that um, so I have just uh, filled the Brown master up with a bit of water, not masses, but just enough to cover the element and the like. Uh, and I've put the um, the optional uh, hot filter in, and I've just set the brown master to warm up to just 25 degrees. And I put the pump on, uh, and just going to give it a bit of a bit of a scrub out, a bit of a clean out. Um, I think I might brew in here. I think because I've got water there. Um, and a drain and bits and pieces. I've taken the malt pipe out and the lid and I've got all the filters and stuff and uh, this is going to be uh, the first brew uh, that we're going to have a go at. Um, comes with the inst instructions on seem pretty good. I haven't looked much inside it from there but these are the um, instructions from our friends at uh, Brew UK. So yes um this is uh, what we'll be uh, what we'll be having a go at um seems all pretty straightforward it's a single temperature mash and i might uh after doing a bit of reading i might play around a little bit and i can talk about that later and uh, show you what i'm gonna do i might play around with putting a couple of steps in um just because i want to try and make this a little bit more full bodied than a than a standard uh, tribute. So at the end here, I'm assuming is uh, uh, yeah, there's our hops and all the grains we're going to need. So there's our, our hop bill and, uh, and all our grain bills there. Could have a bit of Styrian Goldings. So yes, all good. So um, I'm going to carry on now and uh, just give this a bit of a scrub, empty it out. Um, I'm not going to bore you with uh, me filling it back up with water to. Uh, 25 litres but uh, yeah we'll be back interestingly just as a little update and uh, this uh, definitely confirms the merits of giving these things a, a bit of a rinse and a wash out before you use them I've just noticed I don't know if you can see that um, a load of bits looks like they've all come out um, and running the pump and giving it a wash out so definitely worthwhile unless you want uh, all that stuff in your beer so yeah Hi again everyone, um, you might notice I'm wearing different clothes and things are set up slightly differently from uh, just before, uh, I ended up having to cancel uh, starting uh, starting my brew on that day, family pressures and stuff going on, it just wasn't going to happen, so uh, we've reconvened and uh, I've reset up here as you can see, uh, oh, there we go, um, so uh, I'm going to start again. Basically, uh, I've already filled up now to. Uh, oh, can we get that in there? Yeah, so I've already filled up now to 25 litres of water. Um, and I think we'll. I've got to um, set the program for the recipe I'm going to make. Um, I've made a slight change to the to the single stage mashing profile with the recipe pack I was given. Um, uh, for this tribute owl because I want to try and 
make the beer have a little bit more sweetness, a little bit, a little bit more robust. So I've changed the um, the mashing profile slightly. So um, I might just take you through just programming the recipe in, um, and then we'll uh, make it start. Good stuff. So this is the recipe, um, the pre-bagged grain bill um, and hops. Although I think I've got to weigh the hops out, so uh, we'll deal with that after we set the thing going. Um, but this is the the, the recipe. Um, now you notice the the standard uh, mashing there is literally just a single stage mash with a boil. Um, I'm going to modify it slightly, as you can see in my childish scrawl up there. Um, based on a, a reading a few forums and a, a bit of reading and, and stuff and the science behind some of this to uh, to try and uh, yes make the uh, make make the final wort a little have a little bit more body a little bit uh multi sweetness so uh, i thought i'd just uh, i've never tried programming um this before so i thought we could uh, have a go at this together because uh, this could be quite interesting um the one thing i have done is I have uh, set the um, language on this and uh, I'll just show you this because I thought this was uh, mildly funny for someone like me um, yeah interesting spelling of lighting there obviously you can uh, you can change the uh, the lighting settings on this which is a I guess a bit of a gimmick as it were but you know whatever floats your boat so you know pink if you're that way inclined um, uh, but I think I will have some lights because um, quite like the blue um, and it'll kind of catch your eye so I think I okay that but yeah no other than that that's all the playing I've done so I think I guess it would be recipe I'd have to go to um, now this is one recipe that's there uh, delete three delete two new four so these are a load of recipes that are already there so I'm a bit confused so we've got delete one two and three edit one two and three and new four so if I go so I, want to, I don't want to mess around with the two the three that are already there so if I say new four so um, I've set my mash temperature I want that to be 40 degrees um, and then my first step is going to be 52 degrees which is there and I want that for 20 minutes and then my next step is 66 degrees and I want that for 80 minutes that's quite handy that it does a uh, that's super super quick kind of a jump up through and then uh, the next step I want a 78 degrees to do my mash out so oh, that's interesting so we've got those there as well okay so what I'll do actually what was that at? that was 72 wasn't it now I'm told if you don't want it to run a step you just put this this relative step at zero. So one of those and that. I set that at zero, and then I can set my mash out to fifteen minutes. Buttons are a little bit funny on this. They're kind of responsive. Oh, kind of responsive, but not. You kind of have to hit them right in the. In the middle because they're not clicky they're um they're kind of touch screen stuff so um yeah it take, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to i think so that's okay so boiling now i've been told to set that to 102 just to make sure it gets there uh boil on my recipe is 70 minutes so that's boiling now hop additions i have um, one addition at the right at the start of the boil, so at 70 minutes, and then I've got one at 60 minutes, so 10 minutes from the end, and then one at flame out. 
So I'm assuming I make that, if I make that 70, it'll go, and then 70 and then 10, I'm assuming this is right, 10, and then if I make that zero, do you think? Hmm, what do I do there, I wonder? Do I put that at zero? I mean, I, I know I'm gonna have to add it, so should I just put zero? I have to think that'll kind of prompt when it finishes the boil, maybe? Let's give it a go, anyway. So we say edit four, that's all good, I guess. Well, that takes me back into the edit. Okay, so if I go abort. Okay, uh, so we've got uh, all of the all of the recipes in there. They're all there. We're all pretty happy. Um, so, abort. I don't like the use of the word abort. Back feels like a better thing to do, but um, uh, sort of back better instruction. But there we go. Um, so, I think we can go for the big switch on. So, if we go down to recipe four, uh, I have to make a note of what the recipes are somewhere, maybe. Um, I think you can store up to 10 recipes on this thing, so that could be quite handy. Shame you can't change the name of the recipes there. I'll sort of give them like a profile name or something, would be quite good. Anyway, recipe 4 is what I've got in there. Uh, I've got all the water in. So, I think we can hit the button and tell it to go. And there she goes. Uh, it's just a... Uh, it's just doing a few start and stops for the pump, I think, to um, just uh, uh, prime the pump. Let's have a quick look. It's the second prime. It's the third prime. This is interesting. It doesn't actually say how many primes it does before it gets going. That's four. Let's just start on another one. That's five. Right, there you go. So it does five primes and it's now running the pump and the heater. Um, you know that because you can see the P and the H up there, which again isn't explained anywhere, but I guess it's any manual but I guess it's fairly self-explanatory so there you go uh, so we are now heating up to uh, um, to mash temperature um, heating away quite nicely uh, we've gone all the way up to the top mark or 25 litres um, yes heating and going and uh, here we go so uh, be back later once we're at temperature Well, this is quite a nice touch, actually. Um, it's actually saying that um, it's uh, reached its temperature, so it's got to the got to the mash and it's uh, beeping its way through. But my question now is: is do I hit OK and then I can add the malt pipe and mash in, or because the pump's running, so? Let's let's give it a go. Let's hit select. See, this is this. It's this sort of stuff that the manuals don't tell you. So, to try and work this out, I guess as we go. So, if I press right, okay, right. So now, as you can probably see, it's now telling me to put the malt in. It's overshot by 0.5 a degree, but I'm sure that'll be fine. So, right. So, it's stop the pump. Um, right. Time to uh, mash in. Hi everyone. Um, excuse the slightly uh, uh, low down thing going on here. Um, I've just remembered something, um, which interestingly I haven't seen anyone else remind you about, but um, uh, it suddenly dawned on me a minute ago. With all of this, I'm starting to use liquid yeast, so it's my first go at using liquid yeast, and I suddenly thought, well, I was at, this has just come up to mash, I just thought, actually, yeah, what am I going to do about the yeast? And I've got the packet out, and interestingly, um, this one has got a couple of cool things about it. 
Um, but it says you've got to leave the packet to incubate and swell for up to three hours. Um, so we're going to be touch and go on, on, on this, but um, hopefully we should be okay. But interestingly this, I'm using the, uh, can you see that, the YL uh, liquid yeast there, uh, Thames Valley, I think with this recipe. Uh, but on the, uh, on the instructions, it actually tells you to, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, uh, giving it a rub and a whack, which I thought was quite nice. Um, so activate, locate and move inner packet to a cooler. I think I can feel the inner packet. I think I can. Yeah, I think I can feel it. Um, in the palm of one hand and firmly smack the package with the other hand to break the inner nutrient packet. Confirm the inner packet is broken. I don't think I can, you know. Mm, we might have to um, I'll have to give this one a this 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 could go horribly wrong, couldn't it? I can feel the packet in there, but I can't I can't really see anything because I haven't got a clear I haven't put a clear window on it. I can definitely feel something. Should I give it a whack to see what happens? Right, stand back. Put it down into the corner. Ow! Okie dokie, well, I think that's done it. So, right, uh, let's uh, put all the other bits and pieces together and then uh, mash in. Uh, well, hi again everyone. Um, I think I've given this a good beating. I've heard some kind of fizzing and stuff going on in here. So, I can only assume I've broken the, um, the nutrient pack inside. So, I'm... Um, I don't think I've burst the packet because I just had visions of this shooting everywhere. So I think that's all done. So I've just got to leave that and let that kind of grow, I think. So let's put this to one side. So I think um, we're now ready to mash in, I think. Um, so let's put the pipe in. So we're going to go with a 20 litre pipe. Um, I'm not going to do a 10 litre in my first batch. Uh, I think that might be a a little bit of a bridge too far. I think it uh, takes a little bit more thought and that expertise. So, um, so we've got the seal. Make sure the seal's all good because that's a, the main thing this relies on. So, make sure the seal is all good. So, yeah, pretty happy with the, all of that. Right. And she goes. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using the. Um, Got the hot guard in already. I've remembered to, uh, to put that in now. I could see myself forgetting that one day, and I'm sure that day will come. Um, let's tighten that up a bit. I feel like it's moving around a little bit, uh, but I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that day will come when I forget to put the hot guard in, and it'll be a bit too late. But um, I've remembered this time, so it's always a bonus. So, uh, so yeah, so we've got that in there. So that's in. Um, bottom filters, as I've been reliably been told not to uh, not to forget to put the bottom filters on. So we got our first big filter. Um, it should go all the way to the bottom. And the next fine filter, all the way to the bottom. Interestingly, the Brahmos is keeping the temperature at 40 degrees quite nicely actually, even though with that pump. Um, I'm actually working from home today um, and uh, getting this going in between and it's uh, quite nicely uh, worked away at keeping the, keeping the temperature steady. So uh, that's the pipe in, the bottom filter, the, the, the 
combined filter. I've got the other two filters here to go on top. Um, and on the bar, I haven't weighed out the, um, the hops yet. We'll do that in a little minute. Um, so, chiller's ready. I think it literally is just time to start adding some malt in. So, um, so this is a all pre bagged um, uh, recipe. So, apart from giving it a good mash as it goes in, I don't think there's a great deal I'll do. So, I think I'm literally just going to cut the corner and start to tip it in. I might fast forward to this bit because I'm sure it's not very exciting for you guys to watch, but you know. All I can say is you have to be there, I think, to uh, get the full enjoyment. Oh, but smell that. Oh, that smells good. Right, so as I've heard, it's very important not to get any down the sides uh, because that could clog your pump. So uh, let's tip some of this stuff in. It's the first bag. This is a, a little bit of a mixture, a little bit of a recipe. It's all not just one, one malt. So um, multi goodness in there. Fabulous. So uh, the malts in this are three kilograms of Marisotta um, and 700 grams of Marisotta plus 1.15 uh, kilos of Munich. Munich malt. So, um, so yes. Right, let's give that a bit of a stir. Um, which, uh, I think that's a uh, gone in quite nicely. Of course the beauty of this is at this stage you don't need to worry about uh, everything being sterilised because uh, you're going to boil everything to, a, to the ends of the earth so that's pretty good. Right so, uh, big, big kilo bag. Um, we might have to put this in in a couple of a few stages I think. Cause, uh, this might take a little bit more work, so let's uh, and of course if you're doing this on a grain farmer, you'd have to have this the middle post kind of covered up with cellophane or a glove or I've actually seen a condom used actually. Um, of course the nice thing with this is you don't need to worry about any of that. You just have to just make sure. You get it all in the middle. So this is um, what we're doing quite well. So I've, I went for the full 25 litres because I think with the boil down, um, oh there we go actually, yeah no it's quite a bit at the bottom. So okay that's interesting, see you've actually got to make sure I think Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom when you're mashing in. Make sure you actually give everything right the way down to the bottom filter a stir. It's quite easy to kind of stir, not not very deep if you know what I mean, not to go all the way to the bottom. It's interesting. It's actually there's quite a bit there at the bottom. So, okay. All right. the last bit of this last bag in then. There she goes. described as, I mean I, I don't quite, see I'm new to all this so I don't, I don't quite know what that looks like or why it's bad or what it does but I'm, I'm guessing you don't want that sort of thing so see that's a good kind of thick porridgey kind of consistency. Um, actually I'll bring you over for a quick look. <coughs> Thank you. 
So I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of um, quite a good kind of porridgey consistency. Um, giving it a good stir, make sure everything's kind of nicely mixed from top to bottom. Um, with the full 25 litres, it's quite high actually, interestingly. I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem and I've not miscalculated something somewhere by two litres or something, but I'm guessing it will recirculate enough with the volume and then um, on boil down it will come um, I'll lose all of uh, quite a lot over, over boil I'm guessing you know I'm not going to sparge because I'm told you don't need to um, but I guess you'll you'll lose a certain element even after you've um, you've taken this to, to kind of um, drip drip dry as it were or whatever the proper no name is so yes I think that's pretty much that's pretty much there don't you? I'm sure someone's screaming somewhere saying don't forget to do something but I can't think what it is so um, next I think is filters so thin filter first to uh, kind of capture everything in there and then thick filter On top, perfect, um, and then clamp bar, and then wing nut. Try my best not to drop it in. There we go. Oh, I wonder how tight you should do that. It doesn't really say anywhere, so feels like a good tightness. Filters there. Um, that's a quick wipe of the hand. Right. Um, I think this is go, isn't it? Because all the grains in, the filter at the bottom's in, top filters in. This is in. Pipe. That's in. Water there, we're all up to temperature. Uh, I think it is go, isn't it? I think it is. Right, um, quick check in the box, just make sure we've not left anything behind. No, all of that. We've got uh, our uh, hops to measure out in a little minute. Put them into there, but other than that, I think we're ready to go. So, Mr. Brownmeister, yes, we have filled with malt. The malt is filled in. It is. So it's starting its first stage. Getting up to temperature. So in theory, there she goes. Cool, that smells really good as well. Now, interestingly, how level have I got this? Because I've seen it where they just kind of overflow over one side because you're not quite level, and I'm a bit conscious about that, so I need to try and uh, find a way to level it out. But this doesn't look too bad, actually. It's come out quite pale, um, like that, to begin with, but I will be fascinated to see how this darkens and clears up because uh, this tribute recipe is obviously a, a kind of a traditional ale colour so um, it will be fascinating to see so yes there we go so uh, that's going there that's on its uh, on its next stage so it's going to uh, heat it up to 52 degrees and then mash there for 20 and then uh, 20 minutes and then move on all by itself while I sit here and work um, and uh, yes, away she goes. Um, we'll pop the lid on and I'll, I might pop back periodically and we can uh, have a look together and see how it's going. Now this is interesting. Um, and uh, I just saw it happen, I just happened to walk past to make a cup of tea. So I thought I'd uh, just catch it quickly that actually uh, it's gone into one of these pump breaks. Um, so deactivation of pump uh, to loosen the malt duration for one minute. Um, so this is obviously, um, it, I'm told that it actually works out or it pre-calculates 
how many stops um, it needs to do uh, based on the recipe and sort of the, the pump rests that you program in. Um, so you can see it's actually um, kind of stopped and it's kind of still a slightly milky colour, but it's um, um, it's yeah, it's, it's kind of stopped. I'm not even sure if it's oh, here we go again. It's off. I'm not even sure if it's hit its first mash temperature yet. So uh, so yeah, we shall see. And it's uh, just a. Uh, Oh, the pump's got a good old um, got a good old run on it actually. Um, and yes, away she goes. Still coming through quite cloudy, but then it's only been going ten minutes. So that rest has only literally come about after uh, when I started it, sort of ten fifteen minutes ago. So uh, so yes, we shall see. We shall see. Right, uh, lid back on. <coughs> This is just one thing I noticed actually with the hot guard on. I've got it on now and I'm not boiling yet, but I thought there's no reason not to put it on. Um, the lid doesn't shut properly, which is a bit annoying, really. With that hot guard, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Um, but yes, and uh, off she goes. Ah, ah, that's interesting, isn't it? So it's done the pump break as soon as it's hit um, its first mash step, which is interesting, isn't it? Anyway, uh, yeah, onwards and outwards. So here we are. We're on uh, mash step two. As it uh, shows it there, it's just uh, just hit temperature, so it's just timing along. So I thought we could have another little sneaky peek and see how things are looking. Oh, okay, that's interesting, isn't it? So that's actually clearing up quite nicely, um, and it's kind of gone away from that kind of milky colour and it's starting to look more brown, more beer like which is good. Uh, it's been working away doing this while I've been uh, um, just weighing out the, the hot uh, behind obviously while I'm working as well. Um, yeah it's kind of dribbling and going away um, you know, like, like that there. I was kind of expecting a Seeing how well the pump works without the pipe in, I was just kind of expecting a bit more of a flood, really. So it's kind of, yeah, just kind of slowly, just kind of uh, dribbling away. So there we go. I'll just show you uh, what I've been doing over here. So I've been measuring out uh, hops with the, uh, that's come part, comes as part of this pack into the relevant bits. So 70 minutes, so start a boil, 10 minutes from the end. And at flame out, I guess it just, uh, let those uh, steep for a bit uh, just while you're chilling. One thing I have learned out of all of this though is get some decent scales. Scales I've got a crap. Um, so uh, that's something to definitely add on the list. Uh, those bloody things there. Um, that's definitely something I need to get on the list um, for for the future um, for, for doing more, uh, more brews because uh, yes inaccurate scales are a pain in the backside, particularly with these these kind of dried, vacuum packed, flaky hops um, because it's, they go absolutely bloody everywhere if you uh, if you don't kind of get it out of the packet right uh, and you have to start kind of going backwards and forwards, it's a real pain in the backside um, so we've got here um, we've got 25 grams of Willamette excuse me if I pronounce this incorrectly uh, and 20 grams of Fuggles and then we've got the balance of the two packets of um, um, from there, which I think is about another 15 grams each from, from each of them. And then here um, we've got the Styrian, Styrian? Styrian hops um, to add at flame out. I didn't recall what the weight was, but look at this, it looks a sort of 20, 25 grams ish. Um, I hasn't really said about whether to break these up before kind of chucking it in. I might give it a bit of a, bit of a crush beforehand, but. Um, not really getting much uh, in a kind of a, a, a kind of citrusy smell off any of this actually to be fair but then again it's all dried I guess so um, I guess you won't really see any activation until it's um, kind of hydrated again as it were so yes so there you go so um, I just happened to notice behind me we've got another, we've got another pump break going on um, as we speak uh, and it's just off again yeah here we go and uh, which is which is quite cool. That's quite a nice touch. And it kind of makes sense that you need to um, kind of stop the pump and, and let everything kind of drop back down, and then lift everything back up by pumping through it periodically. So it seems to be doing this about every 10-15 minutes. 
um, which is again is something that I haven't read in any manual anywhere so it's um, another uh, interesting little thing to see so yeah I'll close the lid on this and uh, this will uh, cook away for a good 70-80 uh, minutes I think whatever the step is and uh, yeah we'll have a, probably have another sneaky peek uh, before it finishes well we currently have another pump break it's about halfway through so I think it's time we have a peek and see uh, what it's looking like Oh, there we go, look at that, look. Well, that's looking decidedly clear actually, and um, a lot more brown, beer-like. Oh, here we go, the pump's off again. I guess it might cloud back up. Now oh, the pump gets going again. Because you can just about make out the grill, I think it's just going to cloud up a little bit, but that's clearing up quite nicely in, in uh, yeah. Looking nowhere near as milky as it was before. I was getting a little bit worried at one point. Um, yeah, nice. Okay, well, right, we've got another about another 40 minutes of this mash step to go, I think. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, a little bit less, about another 20. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit less, and then uh, and then into into mash out. Job done. Well, here we go. We're just. Uh, just completed that second sort of main mash step and we're just about to go into a mash out by the looks of it so it's just uh, ramping the temperature up and I thought we'd have another little sneaky peek just to see uh, how things are looking so um, let's have a, a bit of a peek on how it looks ah now that's a bit more like it isn't it you can uh, actually run in quite clear now and interestingly I guess it's it's only really started to do that since um, since the temperature started ramping up for the mash out, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, really quite um, loads clearer than from when we first started. So there it goes. It looks like a few kind of grains and stuff have kind of made it past the filters, which is an interesting one. Um, it doesn't look like the kind of the filter's like it sits really flush on the pipe and even though I've been told to kind of do everything possible about um, trying to stop it getting out, obviously some have, so it's um, something that would be interesting to see. So uh, yeah, so we're heating up quite uh, hard to, uh, to the mash out temperature. I don't know if you can hear that kind of the element buzzing away. So it's, uh, it's definitely heating away, so um, yes, yeah, clearing up quite nicely. Um, right. So here we are. We're just about to finish the mash out, and there we go. Crystal clear. And there's the buzz to say she's finished. So yes, looks pretty clear, looks pretty good. And what the buzzer is saying, it's saying end of mashing. Now this is interesting then. So it's saying it's end of mashing. It's finished the end of the program, but interestingly, it's still running the pump. So if I wasn't here, it would continue mashing at that temperature. Which is interesting, isn't it? You would have thought it would have um, it would have uh, stopped and just uh, just kind of um, an arm and stopped. But there we go. Right. Okay. Then. So the next thing um, is to uh, is to lift it out and drain it out, and then we'll uh, uh, and then we'll get into the boil. Okay. Good stuff. So here it is. Uh, I've uh, pulled the pulled the pipe out. And it's uh, draining away quite nicely. It's surprising actually how much is actually dripping out. Um, yeah, quite a bit running out. And uh, yeah, there's the uh, there's the grain inside. Interestingly, the pipe felt like it was stuck when I was just trying to pull it out. I think it was to do with the the coarse filter that was sitting on top was catching on the on the on the threaded bar that that runs down through the middle. So actually, I found. Um, taking that off first and then lifting the pipe out um, did the job but that's definitely something to be aware of um, I wasn't sure if it was 
uh, vacuum that was keeping it stuck or whether it was genuinely stuck in there or not so uh, so yes we shall see um, interestingly I notice while it's in this state of waiting for me to confirm that the pipe's removed the heater's cycling on and off so it's keeping it at 78 degrees which is quite good actually um, because I've got to pop out and go and pick my kids up from school but I can leave this to drain and I know it's not going to cool down it's going to keep it at like 78 degrees so keep it there or thereabouts so I can start the boil when I come back so um so yes there we go not too bad so far pretty um yeah pretty pleased pretty impressed so far um, everything's kind of gone to plan it's been pretty uh, issue free been working away while this has been working away for me and uh, yeah okay so uh, I'll get my kids and hopefully they won't disturb us too much while we're uh, yeah trying to, trying to run a boil water looks pretty good all great all round we might even do a gravity reading before we start the boil as well that could be interesting couldn't it all right then next stop boil so we're into boil time uh, the first lot of hops have already gone in, boiling away quite nicely. So yes, um, yes, not too bad progress at all. So uh, first lot of hops has gone in, next lot don't go in for another hour uh, while it boils away. Good rolling boil, can't really complain at all. Okay, so we've just started uh, cooling. Just obviously sterilised that. That's all ready to go. Uh, I've just got a nice steady flow. Oh yeah, that's a good temperature actually. Nice steady flow going through the chiller. So um, oh, it started out at seventy a little while ago. So that's uh, working pretty darn quickly already actually. Quick peek. Nice. Okay, so yeah. Chilling away in a warm, uh, save all that nice warm water for uh, cleaning. So it was chilled down as, as we could get it. Uh, although it's got them pretty quick actually, to be fair. Only three degrees. Um, now it all is hot and everything. Um, it's time to uh, run it all off uh, into the fermenter. Now I think I'm going to run it through a sieve that I've just sterilised with star sun because it comes out of there quite bitty still which is a bit disappointing for the old uh, hop guard so uh, we shall see because uh, this is going to be a two handed process. I'll try and capture it on film if I can but if not um, you'll just have to uh, believe me. The old sieve seems to be doing quite well. Excuse the dog. Getting a good bit of aeration there as well, actually, which is quite good. So, uh, yes. Colour's looking really good, actually. Just what we were expecting. So, uh, yeah, all good so far. No blockages. Not that much crap coming through, actually, to be fair. Maybe I was being a bit unkind, but... We'll see uh, what comes out in the fermenter, shall we? But filling up nicely. So actually, through that filter, it's not bad, is it? Just shy of 20, so I think I've got my volume slightly wrong, so that's something to work on for next time. Maybe a bit more sparging, probably about two litres short, so I'll have to check the gravity and see what it comes out like. Well, hello there everyone, um, <clears throat> you'll probably notice um, I look a bit different from the rest of the video you've just been watching, which was my uh, first attempt at using uh, the Braumeister. Now, I didn't quite, I wasn't quite able to catch the rest of what happened after that point, which I noticed that there wasn't quite the right volume in the fermenter. Now, there's a couple of really valuable lessons that I've learned through that day. One, 
was don't go and try and pick up your kids halfway through uh, doing a brew from school. Uh, make sure your attention is fully focused on what you're doing um, and to actually bother to test and check the specific gravity along the way. For some reason or another, that was one of the things I just didn't do at all and it wasn't until everything was in the fermenter that I was like, oh, actually, specific gravity, the volume doesn't look quite right and I tested the specific gravity and it was, um, uh, it was really high. It was way higher than it was supposed to be. Um, which obviously then presented a bit of a problem. Now, I then proceeded to do two, maybe three of the worst things you could possibly do um, and that have been a massively useful experience for me to learn from, learn from the mistakes and all that, is the first thing I did was I panicked and I just added a lot of water. Probably added, without really thinking it through and actually just doing a few quick calcs, probably added probably best part of three litres of water. I didn't like add a litre, test the gravity, add another litre, test the gravity. Uh, I just added three litres. Now, you would have thought that that would have been great, that would have got it somewhere near. But what I then discovered was that now my gravity was way lower than it should be. Uh, and I was looking at getting a beer with something like, off the top of my head, something like 3%. Uh, which from a, um, a session point of view could be quite good, but again, didn't really think it through, I probably panicked a bit. So after a bit of hurried scrabbling around on the internet and a bit of thought, um, I made my second fatal error. Um, I added some sugar. Uh, thankfully, I had the forethought not to just add just straight sugar. I actually boiled some sugar up uh, in some water on the on the stove, boiled it, added the sugar syrup, um, got it all kind of sterile, cooled it down, and then added it. Now, what that it then you know fermented away quite nicely, chugged away really good, finished in around about the time it's sort of expected. Um, you know, crowns and dirt and everything, all good. But what then happened when it ca then came to conditioning that uh, beer was after a few weeks, you got this really kind of, kind of, a, uh, I want to say astringent, I'm not sure if that's the right word, really overly crisp kind of, uh, that just wasn't pleasant at all. And I ended up having to throw that whole batch away. Um, which was a real shame, really, because you know one of those um, one of those kits from the guys brew UK is probably you know with the liquid yeast that was used, probably best part of twenty four quid. Which okay, it's not the end of the world, but you know uh, I'm sure we could all do without um, um, wasting or, or throwing away twenty five quid, um, and you know probably best part of four hours work. So. coffee at the moment, might be on a few beers later. Um, so yeah, so even though that brew ended up getting thrown away, it was very, very valuable lessons to be learned. Um, using a brown mice which is completely different to anything I've ever used before. Um, but yes, so I thought I'd better just to kind of explain what I'd got on there. Everything looked great right up to the end of when it was like, mm, hang on a minute, things aren't quite right here. Um, other few silly little things like I don't need to add the hot garden until right to the end. And actually, if you're just using pelleted hops, you don't need to use the hot garden at all because actually it doesn't achieve anything. If you're using, you know, dried compressed flowers, then yes. Um, uh, allowing a bit more time for um, to allow the, the malt pipe to, to sort of um, loiter or drip out is always a good thing. So yes, so I thought I'd better just kind of fill in a few gaps at the end there. Thanks for watching um, my first foray. Um, hopefully, with a few things that have been going on, hopefully we've seen a few more come out a little bit quicker uh, and a few more explanations. Um, sorry for the delaying through this, and obviously you can tell behind. It's Christmas, so uh, happy Christmas to you all, and um, cheers, and uh, I'll see you all very soon.